Good afternoon, Emmanuel Elementary. God is good all the time. I hope you guys have had a wonderful week. It's Friday. Are you in your eagle blue like I am? Also, how many of you came to Muffins with Mom this morning? I hope a whole bunch of you. Nice little drive through. Good time to get muffins and enjoy your mom, huh? If you didn't get to come, guess what? You can totally celebrate your mom this Sunday. Just do something special for her. Now, are you guys ready to worship together? We have another great chapel prepared for you. Really special speaker, you'll recognize her. She also interviews one of her students, which is really fun. So I'm ready for us to learn something new. So let me pray for us and then we'll hop into some worship, okay? So bow your heads. Lord, again, we just come before you. We love you. Thank you for another week of learning and just being together, even though we're apart. And I just ask that as we go into another chapel, that you will give us ears to hear what you have for us, the lesson that you'd like us to learn, something new about you, and just a way that we can apply that to our lives. Thank you for our, for our chapel speaker who was willing to share this week. And I just ask for ongoing blessing over Emmanuel Elementary and over your students and families. In your precious name, amen. Okay, guys, let's enjoy chapel together. Will you stand up and sing with me?
Another heartbreak day Feels like you're miles away Don't even need no shade When your sun don't shine Shine Too many passing dreams Roll by like limousines It's hard to keep believing When I pass you by I know your heart been broke again I know your prayers ain't been answered yet I know you're feeling like you got nothing left Well lift your head It ain't over yet, it ain't over yet So move, keep walking Soldier, keep moving Promises I never will forget. I never will forget. So hold on, hold on. The Lord ain't finished yet. Hold on, hold on. He'll get you through this. Hold on, hold on. These are the promises. I never will forget. I never will forget. I know your heart been broke again. I know your prayers ain't been answered yet But it ain't over yet no. It ain't over yet So get up and move It's Mrs. Ringhofer here, and I don't know if you're surprised or not, but I'm your speaker today. <laughs> so just as it might be a little unexpected for you to see me on here as your speaker, not just introducing the speaker, um, I want to talk to you about some unexpected things. Because, you know, as I think about God and who he is, he often works in unexpected ways. He does things that are unexpected. He calls us to do things that are unexpected. And then also, um, sometimes he solves things in really unexpected ways. He uses unexpected people even. And so right now we are currently in a situation where we were not planning on it. It was unexpected for sure. We didn't know that we were going to be doing distance learning at home, that your parents were gonna be some of your new major supports and that we'd be teaching to you online. And I know talking to my other teacher friends here at Emmanuel, we miss you guys, and um, but we're very happy that we get to see you online. Well, I wanna to talk to you about somebody that I know you've talked about before in previous years, but somebody who has an unexpected story. Um, it's someone that I've been talking with my fifth graders about, and I know Mrs. BC has been talking with her fifth graders about, and well, I'm gonna have you try to guess who it is. My first hint is that it's a boy, well, a man, and 
he has a name change. His name changes from one thing to something else. And he starts off as somebody who doesn't like Christians. He doesn't like them. He tries to arrest them and even tries to kill them. Did you guess it? Saul. And so in Acts, we are currently reading in fifth grade about how Saul was an unexpected choice for, for God for, to choose. He was unexpected for Jesus to come before and to have a vision with and then to call to ministry. But you know, I'm so thankful that Jesus can work with us in unexpected ways. So if you go to Acts chapter nine, verse one, you're going to see a really interesting sentence here about Saul. Let me read it to you. It says, meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. Wow, murderous threats. That is such strong language. He must have really hated Jesus, Jesus' disciples, and all of his followers. So what happens is Saul's in the process of hating everybody, which is not a good feeling to have anyways when you're that angry with people. So Saul, he is on his way to a place called Damascus. And let me go ahead and just share so you can kind of see an idea of what this might have looked like. So we have Saul. He's on his way to Damascus with some friends. And what happens is he ends up having this huge light come onto him. And he hears a voice that asks him, why is he persecuting Jesus's people? He's like, why? Or Jesus asks him, why are you persecuting me? And Saul doesn't know who this is because he's been trying so hard to um, ignore the Christians and ignore who God is. And even Saul's friends who are with him are terrified. They can't see anything. They can't see the light that Saul can see. All they can do is hear. And so again, I'm in Acts right now. And Saul says, who are you, Lord? Like, who are you? I don't know who you are. And so he, Jesus answers him, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. Now get up, go to the city, and you will be told what you must do. So what happens is the men that are with Saul, they're, they help him up. They're helping him on the road. And um, what's happened at this point is Saul is blind before he wasn't, and now he is. He cannot see. For three days, he is blind. His Friends are taking him over to where he needs to go, and he also gets a vision, and somebody else gets a vision. So this man named Ananias. Now, Ananias is a disciple, and um, not a disciple of Jesus. This is after Jesus has already come and gone. So he is a disciple, a follower of, um, of Jesus, even though he's passed. And so the Lord calls to Ananias and sends Ananias, and he says, hey, I want you to go to, to this man, Saul, and I want you to come talk with him and I want you to pray with him. And Ananias basically, if I could put it in my own words, is terrified. He basically says to the Lord, hey, um, have you heard of Saul? Do you know what he does to Christians? Have you heard that he already has the authority to put all Christians into jail? I, I don't really want to go. And I'm kind of scared is pretty much um, what he's saying. But um, the Lord tells them, I need you to go. I want you to go find him and I want you to talk with him and I want you to pray over him. So I need you to restore his sight, right? So he goes and um, he comes over to Saul, who he's, he's afraid of. He goes into his home and he puts his hands on him and he prays that he will be able to see. And it says that when he prayed um, over Saul, um, something that felt like scales fell from his eyes. He's filled with the Holy Spirit, and now he can see clearly. He takes food and can regain his strength. And what happens is, little by little, Saul, his heart starts changing. He starts figuring out more and more things about Jesus, and he starts learning more scriptures, and um, he ends up learning all kinds of things, and he realizes that he loves Jesus. He wants to be baptized, and he turns into, believe it or not, a Christian, one of those people that is persecuted the whole time. So what I need you to understand is um, with this concept of Saul, 
eventually God changes his name to Paul and he ends up being one of the hugest authors of the whole Bible. God chose somebody who was unexpected. God got a hold of him in an unexpected way by um, bringing this bright light and talking to him with an audible voice that everybody could hear. And then he um, brought a believer to come heal his blindness, fills him with the Holy Spirit, and then sends him. He's choosing uh, Saul, who's now Paul, to go spread the good news about Jesus. That is unexpected. Why wouldn't he choose people who already knew? The thing is that I want to encourage you by this week is that God is unexpected and he chooses unexpected people, which is exciting because I don't know about you, but I know I mess up. I know that I sin. And if he could not choose somebody who sins to go and to, to make it right and to ask for forgiveness and then to go share God's word, we would all be in trouble. So I am thankful that Jesus is in control. He knows who he's choosing. He knows what is happening in our world. And we can then come before him in boldness and we can ask for forgiveness. We can make things right and ask God to use us just like he used Saul. Well, guys, I'm excited to interview one of my fifth grade students so you can hear a little bit more from her. Here is Emma Calandra. What is something that was surprising to you about Saul? Um, that he did such bad threats to the disciples. Yeah, he did. And then also, um, when you were going through your devotions yesterday and today, what stood out to you? How Ananias, one of the disciples, had the same vision as Paul um, Saul, and, um, how he kind of didn't want to, but then he did, even though this guy Saul was, could have killed him on the spot. Right. I know. Can you imagine being that obedient? It's crazy. Ananias was super obedient. And then even Saul ended up being obedient, even though he didn't believe in Jesus at the beginning. Yeah. So what I'm talking about is things being unexpected and how Saul is unexpected. So what has been unexpected for you while we've been home and doing distance learning? Anything stand out to you? Um, well, we're getting a lot more family time, which I didn't think so because of all this school. Yeah. And we're getting to go on bike rides a lot as a family. Yeah. I've heard from a lot of people that were, they're unexpectedly getting a lot of the family time. Cause I know I'm experiencing that too. And then a lot of outside kind of time, you know, everybody's trying to get outside and get active. It's pretty fun. Yeah. So as you're thinking about how to be strong and courageous, just like we hear in Joshua one nine and how to be bold and confident in what Jesus can do. I want to remind you, Jesus is present with us now. He, as we just heard at Easter time, he rose from the grave. He conquered death. And now through the Holy Spirit, we have him with us. So students, I want you to make sure that when you're not sure what's going on, or if you're feeling nervous or scared, take it to the Lord. I want you to pray over it. I want you to pray with your families over it. And remember, we get to be very strong and very courageous and very bold in Jesus because he's already paid the price for us and because he can use unexpected people like you and me, even though we mess up. So would you go ahead and bow with me and pray today? Dear Lord, um, I thank you that you can use anybody. You can use someone like Saul, who hated Christians, who persecuted them and threw them in jail. And then Lord, you went and did something unexpected and radical. You got his attention. And so Jesus, I ask that you get our attention in the ways that, that you need to. I thank you for this time where we can learn from your word, where we can spend time together, even at a distance, and where we can proclaim your name because we know that you are in control of everything. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, Grace. Well, it was so fun to get to spend some time with you and to share a little bit about what's on our heart in fifth grade right now. Would you go ahead and have a great weekend? And um, I want you to be thinking about maybe who's going to be our speaker next week. Bye, guys.
Wow, thank you so much, Mrs. R and Emma, for sharing what fifth grade's been learning. What a great lesson that all of us needed to hear right now. All about the unexpected, huh? It's kind of what we're living. Were you guys able to guess the Bible character from Mrs. R's hints? Did you catch it? The hint that gave it away for me was that his name changed. Did you hear that? And that helped me understand it was Saul to Paul. And I loved how Mrs. R kind of took it and explained God can use even someone who's unwilling. Paul was definitely an unexpected person for the Lord to use for his kingdom. And man, he used him in a mighty way. And then I liked how Emma shared the part that kind of stood out to her was Ananias was terrified, right? It was unexpected for the Lord to ask him to go to someone who was persecuting Christians, but he did. And he was obedient and the Lord used that as well. So two very unexpected pieces came together and in a lot of ways helped spread the gospel, which has changed history. And here we are. We love the Lord. We believe in the Lord. And that's a lot due to the early disciples who spread the gospel, right? So that is so special. Thank you for those lessons. I also loved how at the very end, Mrs. R said, we can come to the Lord with the unexpected in our life. And because we can bring it to him, in that we can be bold because we can trust that, right? So it helps me kind of think the last three weeks, the Lord's a shield about us. We can rest like a little lamb in his arm. And then when we're feeling confused with whatever is unexpected in our lives, we can come to him in boldness and we can trust. Man, I love all three of those. Those are great visuals. So let's really try to do that this week. Just if you're feeling uncertain about something, come to the Lord with that, that unexpected peace and trust and be bold that he's got it, right? It's not unexpected to him. That's the crazy part. It is not unexpected. None of this is a surprise to the Lord. He knows everything and he knows your heart and he knows what you need. So what a fun chapel. We're going to get to stand and sing one more song together. And it's perfect. It's our Joshua 1-9 song. So it's a great way to end our chapel. And then Mrs. R already prayed over you guys. So then we're going to go into our weekend. And we're just going to enjoy our moms, right? Make sure you love on them a little extra this weekend. For a lot extra. Okay, make her, make her feel very special. Okay, and then we'll see you guys next week. Don't worry. I'll be back. Monday announcements. Don't forget, Student Council has a challenge right now. It's serve your community or serve your home. Okay, so that's really fun. And then pretty soon, early next week, I'm gonna be posting some information about our virtual talent show. So that's coming as well, okay? Thank you guys so much for joining us. Have a wonderful weekend. Love you guys. Bye, Eagles. Have I not commanded you be strong and courageous? Have I not commanded you be strong and courageous? All right. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Be afraid, do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go, wherever you go. Yeah.